So Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker yes, showed sir. us still that there are levels to this game, and he's at the very top of it as far as 185 is concerned. For sure. You know, Ikram Alaskarov was a very dangerous last-minute opponent. He's a guy who has a complete game. He's good on the feet. He's great in the clinch against the cage. And, of course, when he gets you to the ground, he can do work there as well. Wins fights from all different fashions, whether it's knockouts, submissions, or decisions. He can do it all. But Robert showed us that, man, he is still at the top level at middleweight. And not only is he at the top level, he's back to his finishing ways. You know, yeah. this was his first knockout win. This was his first finish in quite some time. And so he's showing us now that not only is Robert Whitaker a great champion of old, but he could very well be a, a future champion as well. He could reclaim that middleweight belt. And that's certainly what he wants to do. So I want to talk about, you know, his performance against Alaskarov. You know, just under two minutes long. So right. it certainly wasn't uh, much to break down, but those two minutes, we really saw some excellent world-class striking. And then what kind of is set up next for him? Because there's been talks about him being the backup fighter at UFC 305 for Adesanya and DDP, you know, right. both guys that he's got losses to that he'd love to get back. There's talks of Sean Strickland versus him on that same card, which would be great because a lot of times you want to have moving day on these big pay-per-view cards. And right. then there's the possibility of Hamza, which was the fight that we all kind of wanted to see that we had taken from us. So first of all, what did you think of the performance? What is your what are your takeaways of, of the way Rob looked and his striking? And then what would you like to see next for him? Well, after a performance like that, I always get really excited about what we're going to talk about for what's next for the person that got their hand raised, in this case, Robert Whitaker. And for me, this was such an awesome fight because, I, of course, Ikram wasn't the opponent that Robert was getting ready for, but... In true BMF fashion, Robert was like, I don't care. I'm this is I'm the I'm the main event of a really good, important card. Saudi Arabia's first ever UFC card. It's an important fight night, maybe the best fight night of all time. I'm not gonna let them lose the entire main event. Whoever you have to put in there, even if it's an unranked guy like uh uh Alice Garov, so be it. I'll take him on. And then, like you said, less than three minutes, a full-blown striking clinic. I know we didn't get a whole lot of minutes, but what we did was uh, what we did get was action-packed violence from start to finish. And it was a bit of a one-handed fight. You know, Alice Garov never was able to push on the gas, never really got any offense going, and was out of the fight before he could even, you know, get a mountain offense of any uh, kind on his own. Robert Whitaker is just absolutely lights out with his striking. And it's funny to me because he's so young. When you see the tail of the tape and it says he's 33 years old, you always are like, you're scratching your head like, is that a typo? Like, he's been in the game for so long. It's like Max Holloway. He's just like Max Holloway. He's been in the game so long, and you think, okay, even though he's 33 years old, he's been in the game a really long time. Maybe he has too many miles on him, and he's like a 40-year-old fighter. But no, I think we're seeing a resurgence of Robert Whitaker. I think, honestly, Drickus Duplessis got lucky when he was able to get his hand raised against uh, Robert Whitaker, and I don't know if it would happen the same way if they had a rematch later down the road. But I do think Robert Whitaker needs to be in the title discussion. And I love the idea that you said for what's next for him. Because after a performance like that with the high-level striking, people want to see him in these high-profile fights. And while we have 185 taken care of with Drickus Duplessis and Israel competing for the, for the strap, Sean Strickland has done everything he needs to do to put himself back in title contention. And now, after this past weekend, Robert Whitaker has also done everything he needs to do to get back in title contention. So what do you do when you have two number one contenders? You let them face off against each other, and then the winner of that fights the winner of the title fight, uh, you know, barring there is no sort of a rematch or some sort of crazy thing happens where they have to get back in there with each other and then there's another six-month period of waiting. So I think Robert Whitaker and Sean Strickland is the fight to make next, but I wouldn't be, I would be remiss, I should say, if I didn't get to see Hamza Chimaya versus Robert Whitaker ever because I was really excited for that fight and I really would have loved to see Hamza Chimaya in there with a Robert Whitaker of the caliber that we saw on Saturday. What we saw out of him was championship material, some of the best striking, not just at 185, which is a slightly bigger division, but of all of the strikers in, in the UFC, Robert Whitaker's doing some things that are very special, very unique, and, and very true just to himself. Like, you can't see a lot of guys 
with the power that he has coming from that karate stance. And we can break down sort of that finishing sequence that he had, which was beautiful. And majority of it was hands, really heavy punches coming through that uppercut that really uh, ended the night for Alice Garoff. But when he started to attack after he saw um, uh, Alice Garoff wobble off of that overhand two, which was really beautifully timed, he beat the kick. Alice Garoff was throwing a naked kick to the inside leg of Robert Whitaker's, uh, uh, or the inside of Robert Whitaker's uh, lead leg. And for me, that's such an important drill. You beat the kick and you hit them with something more painful than what they're going to hit you with. It worked perfectly uh, for Robert Whitaker in this situation, and then he put it on him. But that high kick that he sent to try to end the night was devilishly close. And it would have been cool to see something like that. He's so good with those high kicks, but of course he was able to find his balance after that and then continue to look for his target. Eventually the finish came seconds after and look, Robert Whitaker belongs in the title fight after a shot like that, even though he's had a couple of losses against the guys that are competing for the title right now. I think this is a great thing. The 185 divisions in great hands and him versus Sean Strickland is definitely the fight to make. Yeah, well, I mean, with with a performance like that and then having just beat Paulo Costa recently as well, you would immediately thrust a guy like that into the title fight. The problem is he's lost to both guys that are competing for the title, so he probably will have to do one more unless he does accept a backup sort of position and Drickus or Izzy fall out. They would they would put Rob back in there. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I do want to see Rob versus Hamzat at some point, but I think for the time being, that ship has sailed. Yeah. Rob was giving a hand down to Hamzat to begin with. You know, Rob is a guy who's got a resume that stacks up against anybody's in the UFC across any division. And Hamzat is phenomenal. He's must-see TV. He's an undefeated fighter. But he doesn't have the track record, especially at 185, that a Bobby Knuckles has. Right. So when you have a performance like that, last-minute opponent, Alice Garoff, very difficult fighter to, to plan for, especially on short notice, you know, it's almost like he's moving on now to either a number one contenders fight or a backup fight for a title, right. which would be Sean Strickland because Sean is kind of the odd man out in this equation. We can't forget about Sean because a lot of people, including myself, thought that was an extraordinarily close fight that he had with Drickus earlier this year. Yeah, I thought he won. Yeah, a lot. And I mean, there's certainly an argument for that. It's It was three rounds to two either way you slice it. And if you had it for Sean, great. If you had it for Drickus, great. You wouldn't be wrong either way. Right. But it, the, the point is that it was very, very close. And so you can't just leave Sean hanging out to dry. So right. you got to put Strickland in there with somebody and Robert Whitaker makes sense. If I'm the matchmakers, I'm doing Strickland versus Bobby Knuckles on UFC 305 in Perth. It makes sense. Robert Whitaker is an Australian. Very so great, great fight to make. And then also if something falls out with a championship fight, you've got four guys that they can figure out something and, and put a card together for, for a great title fight. Right. Just but, like Ikram stepped in. He was on that card originally and then he got bumped to the main event slot, which is even more impressive. Well, I think he was on the card the week before, wasn't he? It was oh, like shoot, a week. Okay. Yeah, I think he was supposed to be fighting the fight night in Vegas the week before, but I, I don't recall exactly. There's no way we could ever yeah. find out, right? <laughs> but uh, but you know, Robert Whitaker, I want to talk about that finishing sequence because to me, it was a real striking masterclass, and it was a masterclass in patience and shot selection as yeah. well. Because you know, Ikram Alaskarov is very good with his straight punches. When we did the breakdown on Ikram. You know, that was one of the things we said. He fights really well going backwards with his straight punches, and that could disrupt Rob's be style because Rob likes to blitz in on his opponents. Right. But that blitzing style was exactly what led to that finish because when he saw that kick coming, he timed it perfectly to start one of his blitzes, and he was able to beat Alice Garoff with the overhand, as you said, the right. beat the kick drill that crew Bob Perez instills in all of the fighters here in Houston. What you do is if you see a kick coming – you've got to close that distance because the kick is not effective from a really close range right. and you can beat them with a shot if you see it and you time it appropriately. Right. So he did that beautifully, rocked Alice Garoff with the with the overhand and yeah. he was kind of on shaky legs at that point. There was a few other shots and then there was that kick, but that uppercut was just a, a total lesson in shot selection and patience. Yeah. He knew exactly what he needed to do. You know, a lot of these fighters, when they see somebody hurt, they'll smell blood in the water and they'll just start being wild and, and right. they'll lose all their technique not Robert Whitaker. The kick was beautifully timed. It was well-placed. And then he just kind of waited, waited, waited until he saw his shot. Boom, uppercut up the middle and a few shots on the ground. That was all she wrote. Yeah, so total 
uh, masterclass in, to me in in striking from Bobby Knuckles. Now you said Drickus got lucky beating Rob, but I'm sure you're going to get some pushback from uh, the the Safas in the comments. Yeah, but, for uh, sure. You know, I I I think I understand what you're saying. Like obviously Drickus Duplessis did a phenomenal job of of finishing a former champion right. in, in spectacular fashion. But Robert Whitaker, up until that moment, was fighting an extraordinarily competitive fight with right. Drickus Duplessis, and anybody can get caught on any day. As you see with Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira the first time in right. MMA, you know, Izzy was winning that fight, and Alex was able to get him out of there towards the end. But then what happens? You know, Izzy comes right back, and he puts Alex on ice. Right. So it's one of those things where you can't just... A lot of people are going to say, oh, we don't need to see Bobby Knuckles versus DDP again because we already saw what happened, and it was Robert Whitaker gets knocked right. out. You can easily use that same analogy of, of um, Adesanya and Pereira to say just because one thing happened in the first fight does not mean that the same thing is going to happen in the second fight. And right. Robert Whitaker versus DDP, absolutely the rematch could be a competitive fight. Drickus could win again. Don't get yeah. it wrong. He might get in there and knock him out again. But certainly, Robert, if given the opportunity and Drickus gets past Izzy and, and he were to get past Sean Strickland, you can't hold that loss against him. you got to give the guy his due and let him get in there and, and take a crack at it again because a veteran like him, one thing we know about those guys is they can adapt on the fly. He will certainly learn from his mistakes, and he will not be the same Robert Whitaker that fought DDP the first time, nor will DDP be the same person he fought. So they're both going to be higher level level and i think that would be a fight that would be really interesting for 185 in the future but all in all a really great night for robert whitaker ikram alaskarov really doesn't have anything to hang his head on he was none you know an unranked guy coming in taking a last minute fight it didn't go his way but you know what he'll dust himself off and he'll be back right like israel says dare to be great uh ikram definitely tried to be great uh in saudi arabia but it didn't work out for him but nobody had a bigger fall off uh looking them in the face than robert whitaker he was fighting he was going from fighting one of the biggest names in the entire sport in Hamzat to fighting Ikram, who's just as big of a problem and such a monster, but nobody really knows of him. And more importantly, he doesn't have a ranking next to his name. So this was a guy all the way down in the very bottom uh, in title contention fighting a guy that hasn't even cracked the top 15. For me, Robert Whitaker deserves everything and then some that the UFC is willing to offer him. And as we know from history uh, from the UFC, when you do things for the UFC, good things happen back to you. I would say the knockout over Ikram is a great thing to happen to him, but that's only the very beginning because I think the UFC is going to realize what they have in Robert, Robert Whitaker even more than they already do, and they're going to put him in that title contention right there with Sean Strickland or maybe potentially uh, the alternate. We don't know exactly, but I definitely think that's the direction they're going to move. No doubt.